Hello and welcome to another amazing dancing dialogue here in Song Coast, Sonic Song Coast. And today we have again with us Bruno the Extraordinary, who thought he lives a very ordinary life. And today we're actually picking up from something that is the essence of dancing dialogue. And what fascinated me about dialogue for a very, very long time. That is that something comes out that sparks something even more within ourselves. And so this happened. Bruno caught up on the dancing dialogues and picked up a piece from our dear friend Olafur. And now I leave it up to you, Bruno, to tell us what, what caught you, what sparked you, what does it mean to you, what Olafur summed up so beautifully. So without revealing his entire video, uh, because it was really fascinating to watch, uh, he was talking about wholeness and we come from source and source gives us constantly, but we have a role to play in that too. Our part to play is to give back to source so we can continue to grow in a wealth of abundance of all kinds of new experiences. What does that mean in practical terms? This is where I come in. <laughs> of course. This is where I come in. I challenge the common ideas that people go by because they see the wonders derived from experiments from science and other studies. And I challenge their, their the very basis of their ideas by demonstrating that nature is not linear. Nature is not coming out of a lab. Nature is actually more magnificent than we can comprehend. So... When Oliver uh, summed it up, I was blown away. I was like, well, I've got nothing to teach now. And then I got thinking for a moment. I was like, well, okay, it's good to put it into words now. What does that mean in practical application day-to-day -day life, right? Mm -hmm. So we have human habits. We have human uh, uh, social experiences, social backgrounds. It makes us act in specific ways and think in specific ways. We're planning according to what we think is our needs. And we don't even understand the half of ourselves. We're made of trillion cells. How many of those cells are consisting of bacteria alone in our own body? Who is Bruno in this body, right? Well, so... If I don't understand my own body, now to try to understand nature as a whole is a whole different story. Hmm? You see where it's easy to be biased in our approach. Mm -hmm. So without pretending uh, that I know it all, because this is not what I'm trying to do here. I just try to open views to new perspectives, new possibilities. If you don't explore different avenues, you cannot fathom that maybe you could be wrong at some point in your reasoning and so you, if you can't come up to the conclusion that you can't be wrong at some point that maybe your way can be improved well you will never improve them right now we have developed a system that is self-sustaining worldwide of a machine that takes 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 from nature mm -hmm. and gives very little back well, actually, it gives it all back to nature, but in a mishmash of ways that it, it is not very friendly for nature to know what to do with it. Because we did give it back to nature in ways that nature is, is not adapted to take it in that form. We are the responsible element for this chaos. And we are the ones suffering as a result the most uh, amount of, of, of mm -hmm. pain down the road. Mm -hmm. This can cause us to go to extinction if we keep abusing. Or it can go completely the other way. It all depends on how we want to adapt our mind and our approach to life. If we keep thinking, well, nature has to behave this way because I see things that way. Mm -hmm. Well, you're never going to get the last word with nature. No. You'll argue with yourself. What I'm proposing is, okay, now that we've had thousands of years of 
fight or flight mentality. Let's fix the immediate needs in our planning. Let's not think what my actions of today will have uh, as a consequence in, in seven or 10 generations from now. And if we thought that far ahead and, and what are the consequences of my actions today on, on my environment? Mm -hmm. Anyone ever stop to think about that? Right? Yes. So if we start changing our very own approach to reasoning, we can then perceive things that before were not necessarily perceivable because if you got a narrow mind, you just look at one value, one data, one experiment, one little thing, and then you just combine a bunch of those oneness. Well, you never get the full experience because you're only looking in a tunnel still. Exactly. Very well said, you know, and nature is obviously a very essential part because we live in nature. We're living on this planet. Mm -hmm. And of course, in a philosophical, in a spiritual, in a consciousness sense, it is all the same. We are taking a lot, but we're actually giving very little. Meaning, in a shamanic perspective, we're not in Aini, we're not in harmony. Mm -hmm. It's not that reciprocal giving and taking that always looks for balance. For thousands of years, humanity is separated separated from self because we only see the physical that we try to control and understand with some data and whatever research we are using which is part of the story but not the whole story mm -hmm. and so we continuously damage things and we're continuously the disturbance in nature because we don't open our mind to more so recently i just came across a very nice quote from albert einstein who obviously was way ahead of us all and this fits in very beautifully apparently he said with logic you get from a to b with imagination you can get everywhere mm -hmm. i'm a firm believer of that too and so it's a little bit what you're saying. If we stop for a moment and really observe nature from another perspective, because nature is like we are a representation of source. Mm -hmm. What are we giving? What are we receiving? How do we get back into this harmony and out of that separation? And I feel this is where you play that practical role on the ground, with the plants, with the earth, with the elements. Yes, and the, I, I am not afraid to defy the imagination of people in terms of what is possible. Mm -hmm. If I think that there could be a way to communicate with a life form that I don't, I just don't know how, but I want to communicate message. Let's say there's an animal that bothers me. What? Well, Try to figure it out, how, how their language works, so then you can have an effective communication. And you'd be surprised if you ask the animal to just change their ways a little so it can accommodate for you be present in their environment, how they behave differently. But if you always treat them as the enemy, because, oh my God, you arrive, and so therefore they have to move out of your way, well, that does not very uh, this is not very representative of a being that is trying to be part of a whole. This is representative of a being that's trying to act selfishly. So if we proclaim to be evolved, if we proclaim to be intelligent, we have a duty to demonstrate it with our very own actions. And come together. We can't just talk about it. We gotta do it. Yes. So. We say, oh, we receive an education, therefore we're smart. Well, now time to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. How can you demonstrate that with nature, how you fit in by not disturbing everything, but rather complement it? Mm -hmm. Nature will give you with plenty what you need. You know, money wouldn't exist if nature wasn't there, right? Okay. Everything that is created on earth comes from the earth. Yeah. doesn't matter how synthetic you think it, that device is still came from the earth mm -hmm. so now 
how can we clean up our act a little bit and act more responsibly as and proclaim intelligent being of this universe now it's time to put our words into actions yes and the beauty is we can do that in many different ways for you it's your connection with nature and the earth yes at the same time just because i don't work physically with my hands in nature doesn't mean i don't have a connection so now it started raining here i'm grateful for the rain i talk to the rain something i did since i was a little boy talking with nature mm -hmm. and of course especially the animals another little example where we're living we have a dog and three cats and the owner has gone for a couple of days so we are in charge and he asked us so the dog would sleep inside our room because sometimes when shooting or whatever happens she gets afraid so we did that the first night however she was very active and very nervous and i had to go out two times because she wanted to go out nobody had rest the second night i spoke to her and i listened to her because of course she missed her owner right mm -hmm. and so we came into that conversation of understanding each other and i said you know i need a good night's sleep and so do you so the following night before she came in and i brought her little bed she was doing her little pee pee outside and then she came in and she was with us till morning no disturbance no nothing she was happy because she felt in harmony she felt taken care of and we all had a good night's sleep so it's how do we interact whether it's an animal whether it's nature we all have practical ways to do that so tell us more about something practical for you when you okay well I came f uh, back from uh, uh, Kingston uh, today. I went to shop in Kingston, Ontario uh, this morning. And one thing I've observed is the amount of stress in the traffic. People are stressed. They're pushing their way through. Uh, I've seen a, a guy trying to come out of a gas station that had a bus in front of him and, uh, and some uh, on the road. And somehow he managed to clip the bus. And I'm thinking, wow, how does that fit in with nature? So I'm thinking, okay, so we're on the highway, we drive fast, we see an animal cr trying to cross and, and, and avoid being hit. And what, is, what some people do, press on the pedal. Or a lot of people will brake or slow down a little, but there is a lack of respect. There's a clear lack of respect. We human have adopted a stance of we're here, we're like the takers and 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 with a big mastermind and the controllers and and then uh, therefore everything else has to make way for our holiness well I, th I don't think it's very clever because it damages everything around us and it's frustrating to see that because nature is trying to adapt to accommodate for our needs well we create needs that are impossible to meet to some extent you know so we have to review what, what what's a real need versus a desire or something be nice to do and how can you adapt your needs to fit in to with the planet and how it works yeah so how can we produce goods that can be more naturally reabsorbed right it's always been a problem of uh, humanity dealing with trashes first dealing with feces and, and 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 urine and then dealing with household trashes at the time of the roman and there was a lot of clay pottery uh, hills that were created as well this is material of the earth that was not recycled uh, appropriately it created mountains it was inconvenient to recycle okay now today we have mountains literally mountains of diverse trash that is composed of so many different things I can't wait that they release the nanobots on those things mm -hmm. to go extract specific materials, to see those mountains that are not being recycled correctly shrink. Mm -hmm. It's time we do a big cleanup. The oceans are as dirty as ever. The sky, pretty much everywhere, they try to fill it with things that don't belong there. Um, so I, I start 
adopting a different stance so the kids that are observing us adults can look at a different model on how to live in a more harmonized way and where everyone receive more. I don't see wildlife as a competitor to my food production. I try to adopt behaviors that allow for predators to exist because they have a very important role to play. And if I can help them somehow by feeding them the leftovers that I will not use in ways that is making them understand, don't attack my livestock, but here's free buffet whenever food is served and you can eat over there and nothing will happen to you. I think it's a win-win. But then we got to see to what extent this is useful to humanity and to what extent this is detrimental to nature. Sometimes interventions like that are absolutely not good for nature. Feeding the animals causes more problems. And we see that in North America with the deer population because in the winter, they develop a different stomach, um, different stomach enzymes to, to break down different types of food available during the season of winter. Okay. So when you give them summer food during that time, which is more rich in, in sugars and sweets and all kinds of other stuff that is not present in the winter, you're actually causing a stall of digestion in the deer's stomach. Uh -huh. So they gulge in all that good sweet stuff and then they can't digest it. So they starve to death with a full stomach. Wow. And human, even to this day, have difficulties grasping that the wild needs to be left alone mm -hmm. we need to let them do their things they're there to make nature better for us so we can have the best experience that we can envision having here so instead of focusing how can i be the greediest of the greediest and the toughest of the toughest how can i be more having with more quality of life in my experience here by making everyone have a better experience too. Yes, being in harmony. Because exactly, now you're generating different frequencies and there's more uh, love created and more beauty created as a result. Yes. And then you don't have problems with trash because you wouldn't allow that to be in the first place. Right? Yeah, thank you for sharing that story about the deers. Of course, I live far away from deers. I have no idea about your part of the world. In fact, I've never been to Canada. So it's quite interesting to me how humanity is taking out deers who are actually wild animals out of their balance and, and even take them out of their life because obviously they feed them things that don't serve them. So it, it's interesting to me that with all what we know, all mm -hmm. this intelligence and knowing we don't know that we harm, I find that very, very interesting. And maybe this is, you know, this is a sign to be conscious, to realize maybe this doesn't work. What is another way to do that? How can we deal in that situation with trash? How can we be more in harmony? What are other ways? Yes. So we have to review what our priorities in our life. Are we going to focus our priorities on how much packaging can we wrap everything mm -hmm. in so we can capitalize on that at the most without considering the consequences of that? We can't live like that forever. We've got to reverse uh, that mentality and start thinking in terms of multi-generational consequences on both a, the planet because it provides the resource that we so need or so we think we need. And B, ourselves, it's for our own sake on the long run for a better sustainable world, a more pleasant world to live in. I don't want to feel like we're living in a zoo where everyone is to each their own. There's no harmony in that. No. There's no harmony in tyrannic reign either. It serves very little purpose other than the one that rules them all. Good for you. You succeeded in demonstrating that and now source will benefit from your experience. Of course, I'm, I'm not trashing that idea that it's important. However, it's not needed anymore. We need to evolve beyond that. 
we need to grow up yeah it's so it's so beautiful to see in what in how many places we can break these old paradigms and really yeah. can come into harmony as you said i mean for you it's a practical sense but it is in all areas of life mm -hmm. we can start looking at it from a different perspective changing our lenses from being greedy and uh, focus on self-interest and success or whatever we think is necessary to just looking at what is the most harmonious way that yes. brings us all into a life of flow and abundance and joy mm -hmm. because yes. it's like beautiful when everything is functioning well and we don't need to worry about the things that we have created like problems. Here's a few examples, just to spark your imagination. Imagine a moment, for a moment, imagine a world where information is given for free. Information is knowledge. Why should you pay for that? Because now that we all acquire the knowledge faster, we can become better in our own personality give better of our, our self back to source since we all unique there's something to exploit right there i shouldn't envy your skills no i should appreciate that you have the skills that you have because you're making my experience way better as a result of you excelling in your skills yeah. so i don't have to yes i like the way you said that we are here to collaborate and to complement. You are not me and I'm not you. No, Your exactly. uniqueness is fascinating. I couldn't do what you're doing. But yet, when we come together, we are both sparking each other's talents and gifts. We inspire each other. And yes, information on many levels, I agree with you, should be free. And it doesn't mean that you and I can't generate income. Because exactly. information is not all. Now, in terms of income, we have established that was a necessity somehow at some point in history mm -hmm. for some reason. But is it possible to live in a world where that's not even existing? That's not even a thing that is a concern. Free food free knowledge, free healthcare, free shelter. And then Bob's young call us what you can create. As long as it's in harmony with your surrounding, there should be no wrong. Yes, of course, money is an energy that has been created to measure income, to measure value and all these things. As we're living in a world where many things are exchanged for that money value mm -hmm. physical goods services productions they are exchanged for that value of money but of course not tomorrow but who, who knows where we are going but even right now where we are currently i feel it's important to have that balance so like the dancing dialogues are free. Mm -hmm. We are not doing that to promote ourselves. We are not charging anything. I want this to be free. But at the same time, I have services to offer that I do receive exchange for. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's important at this particular moment until another time that we are in balance. That we have something that we give for free and that we have other things that we're receiving for to live the best life that we can in harmony and co-creating a totally new reality mm -hmm. so this is where i love playing that role while we're living in one reality where we need resource to create money so you can generate income. Okay, cool. 
I'm trying to envision a world where, okay, money is not an issue, money is not there. Okay, what does that look like? I don't know. Okay, let's begin with a, a simple thing. I start a garden. What do I have? Resource from the land. Okay, if I give resource to my neighbor and my neighbor has got a tractor and I need to dig a trench, is it possible I bring him a few tomatoes, he digs a trench for me? Now, we didn't exchange money. We just exchanged good because it was convenient at that time. We haven't charged anyone interest and we made everyone happy using each other's different skills to the benefit of each other. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to live by different rules at this point, don't we? Yes. And now if we abandon the idea of always claiming money, 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 money as the number one priority for everything and we leave that as a last resource, last resource, always leave it at the back of the pile eventually it can disappear completely and no one is in need or lack of anything. And I try to create miniature models that can demonstrate easily the feasibility of that on a larger scale because everything I create is scalable. Excellent. Everything I do. I started in a flower pot and I finish in a large field and it can be adapted to a continent. It's no big deal. And this is, this is possibly where we are all going, you know? We're starting step by step. Yeah, we have to start thinking about it first. And you have to get out of the ordinary. I mean, for many, for, for a, long, a long time, people would have not spent a half an hour or an hour sitting together sharing that wisdom that we're sharing now for free. <laughs> and this is also part of that you know it used to be all advertising and promotion and whatever but this kind of sharing really didn't take place and there's many different ways of exchange as you said mm -hmm. and i feel it's important that we are starting that i mean my services is not so easy to exchange because what do i need I'm paying rent, I'm eating organic food that I can't plant myself. This is basically the, 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 the essence of our life. Yeah, so I can't exchange that at the moment in that way. Mm -hmm. What I can exchange is the value of my services with those who are on their journey to wholeness who are doing whatever they're doing where i can bring my gifts to play so that they can explore new ways in their business in their life in their relationships to be whole and at this moment yes my exchange is money but it is not about the money no it's that it's that transition that we're in as long as money is here, we work with it, but we also change the energy of money mm -hmm. in the meantime. I feel that is also important. And as you said, we're starting small pockets. I call it pockets. So mm -hmm. you are planting something, you exchange with the neighbor, he has a tractor, you can get the tractor, or he does something for you. This is how we start. Yes, and I've experienced that more and more every day. Now, if we can each be the best version of ourselves every day and stop being stuck in the past and, 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 and beating ourselves for not being perfect enough, but just try to be the best version of yourself. You got a good day, you got a good day, you got a bad day, you still try. If you can do that, if people start doing that more than just acting like miniature robot on a, on a daytime or schedule, life will already start getting better. It takes one step at a time. Yes, we have to just begin implementing what we thought about, what we expressed, that we were thought, thinking about, and we put into actions. Yes, and be in the harmony of that and stay in the integrity mm -hmm. so that this new harmony that we're creating with nature, with the elements, with the universe and ourselves in it actually works. Because very clearly what we have now is not working. No. 
And we talk about how much we value money and I'll challenge that very idea again and again and again because we look up to the stars with our big sophisticated telescope to get what? Absolutely free lessons from the universe. We look into our heart using meditative techniques to get what? Absolutely free lessons. You tell me who decided that knowledge had a value where we had to associate an exchange of good. And I'll say that was just oneself that came up with that idea one day and forced it on others. And then it became a model. But it's not how the universe goes. It's not how nature functioned. It functioned with more finesse than that. Yes. Way more finesse. So when people are saying it's time for us to give back, it is absolutely true. And by our, our actions on a daily basis, how we decide to cooperate with the environment that we live in. If it's a urban environment, it's a urban environment. If it's a nature environment, it's a nature environment. But your environment, what do you do with where you live? Yes. How do you express the best version of yourself every day? Yes. And how to make that environment the better place as you can make it. Exactly. It's not so hard. It just really starts with making that first step to give and to receive. Mm -hmm. and receiving is not only the big dollars. No, no. When I give back to nature, I get more every time given back to me. That's I've tested that theory and I want to live in a world outside of money and I, I'm not completely out, but I'm getting closer and closer every day. More and more now I get stuff given to me or, or done like work done for me that cost me nothing. Why? Because I render service to somebody else and somebody else knew somebody else that could help me with something and they made it happen just because I made their day. I made their life easier. So now I live in more abundance, less stress, way less stress. I don't have to worry as much anymore. If something is needed, I'll ask around. I and the beauty will, will fix it. The beauty of the system is it fixes itself up on, on its own. It's, it's just magnificent. But my rule is I try to be the best version of myself every day. And if I have a bad day, well, I'll get up and do better the next day. Beautiful. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Nope. It doesn't have to be it perfect. Just have to be a little better than yesterday. That's all. If I can. Lovely. All right. So we're coming to the end of this little episode today with Bruno, who got sparked off. Source is giving us everything. And it's time to give back. And I'm very grateful for this beautiful dialogue that we had today. And Bruno, that you, you really took it to heart. And I also love the way you are really visionary. You can really see how things can be much further ahead. And yet it starts with our first step. Yes. And this is where we're going to leave it today. All of us have the power for this first step. Whether you have the big vision or whether you're here to be a bridge in between, it doesn't matter. But make that first step outside of the old paradigms and start giving back. Bruno, what's your last word for today? Thank you for taking the time to hear the messages we have to deliver to you guys. I hope you can make the best out of it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're perfect for trying. Beautiful. Thank you very much and thank you for being here again and we will see you. Thank you.